Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the required practical GCSE that involves investigating how the resistance of a wire varies with its length. So this is the equipment that we're going to need, uh, plus obviously the uh, battery, and uh, we're going to think about how we're going to set it up. So the circuit diagram that we're going to work to is this circuit diagram here. So we can see that uh, the circuit involves an ammeter to measure the current through a length of the wire. And then it also involves a voltmeter to measure the potential difference across a length of wire. Now this arrow here means that we can change where the voltmeter and also the ammeter connects to, which means we can vary its position along the length of the wire. And we can, of course, measure the length of the wire that we're actually uh, in interested in at any one point with a meter ruler. So uh, this is the circuit diagram. Now you'll also notice that it says resistance wire. This term is useful to uh, highlight because this wire that we use is specially chosen because it has a relatively high resistance. We've got to be really clear with students that connecting wires have zero resistance. Now, in reality, of course, we know that connecting wires do have a very small resistance and it is obviously measurable in a circuit. But when we draw a circuit diagram, we assume that these have zero because it makes our life easier. But when we write resistance wire, it means wire that has a particularly high resistance and it will be a different material. So it's these will be made of copper, whereas the wire that you are going to use in this practical uh, tends to be constant hand wire, so it has a, a higher resistance. Now, you can fix it to the ruler in a couple of ways. You can fix it with sellotape, uh, you can fix it with crocodile clips or with nails. Uh, if it's with, with nails at either end, there's two things you've got to watch out for. One is that actually you've got to make sure the wire is quite taut. So it might involve uh, just like tightening it at one end, so turning it round the uh, nail a couple more times to get it really nice and taut. Um, otherwise, you won't be measuring the correct length. And the second thing is to just note that obviously a lot of these rulers will have it in 99 centimetres and one centimetre. So if you do the full length, it's not a metre, it will be 98 centimetres. So let's set it up. I'd always encourage you to get students to set it up without the battery in, because if you put the battery in and they connect it up, uh, you'll often find that the wire heats up a huge amount. So uh, when you get students to set it up, again, get them to put the voltmeter to one side and just connect it up with the ammeter first and the wire. So we've got one loop that we're going to make, one circle with all of this in. So battery pack to the ammeter, ammeter to one end of the wire. I'm just going to turn this wire around so it starts at one centimeter rather than 99. And I'm going to crocodile clip it onto the nail. Uh, and then I'm going to get another crocodile clip and go from the other end of the battery to the wire. I'm just going to pick a random length for now. Uh, it's not super important at this stage exactly where I connect it to because I just want to make sure that it works. Uh, and I'm going to connect it to the 1.5 volt uh, terminal of the battery for now because we, we probably only need 1.5 volts. If we use more, there's a risk the wire will heat up and that could affect our results with an increased resistance of the wire. Now, I'd recommend that you just use one color wires for the circuit so we can see very clearly that it's on one uh, loop and also so that students don't get confused so they don't think that red wires have to go in the red side, otherwise it won't work. Uh, it's also a good idea to spread things out as much as possible. If you spread things out, then you actually see uh, quite clearly if it's in one loop or not, especially with these quite long wires. If they're shorter wires, obviously it makes it easier. It is a good idea, however, to get the voltmeter and connect the voltmeter with a different color wire. Uh, and this is because the voltmeter connects in parallel in a different way to the ammeter, so it's a different color wire. It's really clear if it's correct or not. Now, you can explain this in a couple of different ways. Uh, one way is the V it points to uh, the two points it's going to measure, or it hugs the thing it's going to measure. Um, it needs to measure before and after something, which is why we connect it in parallel. So here, we connect it across the two crocodile clips like this. And if it's nice and spread out, again, we see clearly that it's in parallel. 
So now this crocodile clip is the one that we're going to measure uh, the length with um, and the one that we're going to vary. So when we're doing the practical, uh, always a good idea just to check it's going to work. So let's put in a, a single cell and we'll turn on the ammeter and voltmeter and uh, we can see that it appears to not be working, which is very common at this stage. So uh, always worth checking that all the connections are pushed in fully. And trying uh, one at a time. So if it doesn't work, replace one wire at a time uh, until you find the source of the problem. So I found the source of the error, which amusingly was that the battery itself uh, was not working, so I've replaced that. Uh, the other common thing that confuses students is they will look at one of the meters and they see there's a minus sign there and they go, why is it a minus? Is it broken? And you go, well, no, it just means we're measuring it in the opposite direction. So we've got a positive and negative round the other way. So usually the simplest solution is to tell them to just switch the positive and negative wires. You can tell them to ignore it, uh, but inevitably they forget right minus signs in the results table and then they put a graph that you know looks a bit weird. So just tell them to reverse the positive and negative so we get two positive values. Now we can take our measurements. The important thing to remember when you are taking measurements is you are always going to move uh, the crocodile clip that is on the wire. We leave the other one fixed and we start measuring from the maximum length. So in this case, 0 0.98 meters. And then we are going to unplug it. We can write down our results and then we can do our new length and we're going to get shorter each time. So shorter by 10 centimeters. Uh, and because I said this one starts at one centimeter, uh, we're probably going to want to go 81, 71, etc. The reason for starting from the longest length and working down is if we start with a really short length, uh, we can end up with some heating of the wire, which will make the resistance go up and therefore affect our results. But if we start from the longest length and work down, there is uh, less chance of this happening. A uh, good idea to, remember, to remind the students to either unplug it between measurements or just to be relatively swift. So again, it reduces any chance of this heating up. Uh, once they've set it up, the, taking the results doesn't take very long at all. You can encourage them to take two or three sets if you want them to take an average. Uh, but because we're going to put a graph, that is slightly less of an issue. The graph itself uh, and the line of best fit will basically provide that for us. So I've got my set of results here. Uh, in case you want to use these. Uh, and then I'll show you what results uh, uh, what these uh, provide, produce on a graph. Sorry. So, so I've uh, calculated all my resistances, very simple, um, V over I, and you should encourage students to have consistency in the number of decimal places in their results table. So one decimal place here, and I've used uh, two significantly or two decimal places everywhere else. And then I've plotted a graph, and you should end up with a graph that is pretty nice and straight and linear. Uh, so you can see here I've plotted it, and my blue line is the line of best fit that I've got. Uh, I plotted that, and I chose to ignore these two points here because probably in my haste, uh, the length measurements are probably wrong because I was doing this quite quickly. Uh, I did plot another one in yellow, a line of best fit, where I take into account the two, assuming they're not truly anomalies. Uh, this line doesn't go through zero, zero. You'd expect it to go through zero, zero. And if students are careful with this, it will go through zero, zero. If it doesn't, you could talk about what the potential errors are. The most likely source of error where it doesn't go through zero, zero is a systematic error due to measuring the length incorrectly. And what I mean by that is if you put the crocodile clip on the wire, you see that obviously the crocodile clip is quite thick. So, you know, what have I written down for my length measurement in this example here? Have I written down 84? Did I write down 84 and a half? Did I write down 84.3, somewhere in between? Uh, you know, you've got to be really careful and consistent when you do this. 
So you should encourage students to um, think very carefully about how they're taking these measurements. Uh, and you could even account for the thickness with some uncertainty uh, or error bars on your graph. Um, now, this does come up in exam questions. Uh, I have seen them say, you know, measure the length of a wire. And they'll say something like, you know, what's the upper bound for the uh, length, what's the lower bound? And of course, that changes whether you use the outside or the inside of the crocodile clips to measure your length. So it's always nice to have a discussion about errors. That is the most obvious one here. If there was a heating of the wire, we would expect the resistance to increase more uh, than, uh, than anything else. So we would expect the resistance values to probably increase uh, a bit at lower values. So because I actually haven't got that at my lower values, it's a pretty good evidence that the resistance has not increased and I actually did that part of the practical correctly.